So here's some help with the experiment 6 post line. The first question says, explain how the alum crystals were purified. If you remember from page 12 of the lab manual, the, uh, you were introduced to six separation techniques that you can use to purify things. So let's go through these one at a time just to refresh your memory. Crystallization allows you to separate things based on the temperature at which they freeze. Dissolution lets you separate solids based on their ability to dissolve in a liquid. If one solid dissolves and another doesn't, then you can separate them by putting them into the liquid. Evaporation separates things based on the temperature at which uh, they boil. So if one liquid boils at 50 degrees and another liquid boils at 100 degrees, you can heat the mixture up to 75. One will boil away and the other will stay as a liquid in the container. Extraction separates liquids based on their ability to mix with other liquids. So for example, oil and water don't mix. And if you have an oily substance, say like gasoline, um, you can, it, it's naturally going to mix with the oil. So if you have a bunch of like gasoline bubbles in water, you can swoosh it together with some oil and it's, they're all gonna go to the oil. So you can separate it that way. Filtration separates things based on size. So you have a mesh uh, like in the bottom right, there's a scanning electron microscopy image of a mesh. Anything that is small enough to fit through the holes in the mesh will go through the filter, and anything that's too big will stay behind. And finally, you can separate things with sublimation. So sublimation is when materials go from a solid directly to a gas, and certain materials do that at particular temperatures. So if you have two things, one sublimates at one temperature and another sublimates at a different temperature. You can separate them by heating them up in between those temperatures. Now, you didn't make a lawn in the experiment until part D, step one. So you might go to that part of the experiment and see which of those six separation techniques you used after that. And that's the, how you purified the alum that you made. Question two says, Explain why the alum crystals were washed with cooled 50% ethanol water solution instead of deionized water. So to explain that, uh, to help explain that, I'll just show you a video of what happens when you mix alum crystals with deionized water. So here the white crystals are alum and the water in the beaker that's deionized water. So you can see that they dissolved. So then why didn't you wash the alum crystals you made just with TI water? Why did you mix it with cooled 50% ethanol water? Question three says a student was in a hurry and didn't clean the aluminum metal. Explain how this would affect the reaction and how does this affect the student's reported percent yields? So this is really two questions. The first one is explain how this would affect the reaction. And it can affect it in a couple ways. One, if the aluminum metal is dirty, then the aluminum might be coated with all of those contaminants, so it won't be able to react with what you're mixing it with. So that's one problem you could run into. Another problem is whatever the contaminants are on the aluminum metal may react with uh, maybe react instead of the aluminum. So if you mix something and you're hoping it will react with the aluminum, it might just react with the contaminant instead. So those are a couple ways that not cleaning the aluminum metal could re affect the reaction. And then how does this affect the student's reported percent yield? Okay, well remember that percent yield is the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. So let's consider each of these things one at a time. First, let's consider the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is what you would predict that you would get at the end of an experiment if you didn't lose any of what you started with, either through evaporation or spilling or sticking to a glass container or sticking to the filter paper. If you had 100% efficiency in the reaction, what you would predict you'd get, that's the theoretical yield. Now, here, you would have weighed out what you considered aluminum. But because the student didn't clean, or the, because the student didn't clean the aluminum, it would really be aluminum plus contaminants. But they would write it down on their lab notebook as just aluminum 
So that would be, you, they would write down a mass for aluminum that's bigger than it actually is. And then in the experiment, that all that aluminum would get turned into a lum. And if you started with more aluminum, you would predict that you'd get more alum. So because they included the contaminants in the mass of aluminum, they're going to predict a bigger amount of alum than they could actually get. And so their prediction for the theoretical yield is going to be bigger than it would normally be. That's going to go in that denominator in the equation for the percent yield. Okay. Now let's consider the actual yield. The actual yield is what you get when you actually do the experiment. You go into the lab and some things do stick to glass containers or they do stick to the filter paper. They do evaporate away. And so you get a um, less than 100% efficiency in your recovery. What you actually get, that's your actual yield. So here you'd be starting with the aluminum again, or the supposed aluminum. Actually, it's aluminum plus whatever contaminants because you didn't clean it. And the actual yield can be affected differently depending on what the contaminants are. If the contaminants aren't very reactive, then they'll just sit there and the aluminum will react with everything, and you'll get the same actual yield that you would have otherwise gotten. If the contaminants are reactive, then they'll react with whatever you add instead of the aluminum, and you'll get a smaller actual yield, because not all of the aluminum will turn into alum. So the actual yield is either going to be the same or smaller than it would be if you didn't have the contaminants. Okay, so now we have an equation. The percent yield is going to be the same or smaller on top, bigger on the bottom, and then times 100. So what will that give you overall? Will that fraction be bigger, smaller, or the same? than as it would be if you didn't have contaminants, if you have a bigger denominator and the same or smaller numerator. I'll let you consider that.